everyone. My name is Dr. Shane Harwood. I'm the principal here at Signal Mountain Middle High School, and it is my privilege to welcome you to our SMMHS virtual orientation for all of our new families that are joining our Signal Mountain family. I uh, want to begin with some introductions, and you can see these folks over to the right of the presentation. I'd like to introduce our middle school or one of our middle school assistant principals, Michael Carson. And Mr. Carson oversees work with sixth and seventh grade students and families. And we have our two middle school counselors who are joining us today as well. And we have Ms. Sarah Jane Flowers. And Ms. Flowers is a seventh and eighth grade counselor. And, uh, and then also we have Ms. Angie Donan, and she is our sixth and seventh grade counselor. So we appreciate them being a part of this presentation today. And the rest of our team, you see those folks listed. Uh, some other folks that you will interact with here at Signal Mountain Mill, Middle High School include Shelly Pritchard. Ms. Pritchard is an assistant principal overseeing high school, mainly 11th and 12th grade responsibilities. Uh, Mr. Bumper Reese is our other assistant principal and he also serves our middle school and our high school in grades eight and nine. Leslie Sharp in our counseling office serves our ninth, 10th, great families and students. And then Dr. Sherry Dagnan is our senior counselor and also works with our 11th grade students and families. And the rock of our counseling department is Ms. Susan Patton, who is our registrar. And before I turn it over to Mr. Carson, uh, again, just want to welcome you to Signal Mount Middle High School. We are about to embark on a very different year with lots of the different things uh, to look forward to and to navigate. But the one message that we want to make sure that everybody understands loud and clear is that we're in this together. Uh, we are going to take on anything that comes at us. We're looking forward to a great, fantastic year, and we are so excited to have you be a part of it. So, Mr. Carson. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, welcome everyone. Uh, going to walk you through some of the general guidelines and procedures that you may want to be familiar with as you begin the school year, especially on that first day. And here you have just a little bit of an overview of what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about, as I just mentioned, some of those school procedures. And then we're going to talk to uh, students about what to expect primarily in middle school as we have a lot of new sixth graders coming in. And we realize that there are other new students who may also be watching this. But we have a lot of new sixth graders. So this is their first time in this building and their first time in a, in a middle school. And we want to be able to prepare them as well. We're going to talk to you about Manage Back and Power School, which are our two online uh, programs that we use to access curriculum and grades. We're going to talk about the student resources that you have available to you here at the school, whether that's athletics or clubs or how to get in touch with your school counselors or any of that stuff, and then also how to get involved and connect into smaller groups so that the school doesn't seem so big. You can find a group of uh, students who have similar interests that you that you can connect with and learn more about. Okay, so we're gonna start with some of the essential school procedures that we have at Signal Mountain Middle High School to help you get about your day so you know where to go and make things as fluid as possible for you to get throughout the day. One of the first things that we wanna make sure you understand is how to get to school and where you need to go when you get here. And then also at the end of the day, how will we do our dismissals? Now we are gonna do things a little differently this year in order to accommodate for social distancing and plans for any different phases that we have throughout the school year, whether it's phase two or phase three. So hopefully if you're watching this, even if you have been at Sigma Mountain Middle High School prior to this year, you can take note of some of the changes that we have in place for this year to help us with social distancing and getting a process of getting students into spaces and through the hallways without overcrowding. In the mornings, Bus riders will enter through the front of the building where they typically drop off there at the high school entrance or what we call the front or the high school entrance starting at 715. The buses will be arriving at a staggered time this year and as they arrive students will be dropped off no earlier than 715 and when, those, when the bus rider students enter the building the middle school bus riders will report to the middle school gym so they can space out and the high school bus riders will report to the high school gym to be able to space out as well. One thing that's different for this year is that student car riders and student drivers must remain in their cars until 730. This will allow us to have some time to create more space and not have to worry about students crowding in a large area as we wait for school to begin. Now, this may mean that there might be a little bit more of a traffic pattern than you're used to. So you may wanna adjust your uh, departure times from home to understand that you cannot 
drop off students prior to 7.30 if you are a car rider or a student driver. If you're a middle school car rider, middle school car riders will drop off at the middle school entrance. Some people refer to the back of the school, middle school entrance back there. And we are gonna have two lines this year. So typically in the morning, if you're familiar, we would typically do a single file car rider line at the middle school entrance. In order to alleviate some of the anticipated uh, traffic that we would have with our changes, we're gonna do a, a double line through that back. So you will come around back and drive through the U and we will have people there to assist you on where to drive through. But you must remain in your car until 7.30. At 7.30, we will open the doors for students to come in the building, and those middle school students can then report directly to their classes once they've been dropped off. And we will have a number of people out helping direct traffic and keep things safe for students as they drop off and cross traffic. High school car riders have a drop off this year at the high school entrance, which is similar, uh, but you, at the same time, you will also be waiting until 7.30 to exit your cars. So if you have uh, mixed grade cars, if you have middle school and high school students, and you decide which entrance should I go to, the middle or the high school, you can choose which one is more convenient for you and we can accommodate that as needed. Uh, if you uh, are a student driver, you will also wait until 7.30 to report into the building. And those car riders and drivers will report directly to their classes at 7.30 where teachers will be there waiting for them and we will have people in the hallways guiding you along if you have any questions. In the afternoons, our dismissals will be done a little differently as well to accommodate some of those travel times to keep people spaced apart. This year, student drivers and anyone that's riding with them, typically their younger siblings, will be dismissed at 2.40, which is five minutes before the end of the school day. This will allow those student drivers to be able to exit the parking lot and alleviate some of that traffic flow before our buses exit and before our car rider traffic exits as well. It also will alleviate some of the hallway traffic that we have as students are leaving the building. If you're a middle school car rider, you will dismiss at 245 regular end of the school day to designated areas at the rear middle school entrance. Typically, middle school car riders would all go down the hallways and then out that middle school entrance uh, together. However, this year, Middle schoolers, if you have classes that are near exits on that U shape back there, for instance, if you have an exit that, or a classroom that is near an exit by one of those stairwells on the middle school hallways, you can exit those doors this year and we will have people guiding you down the sidewalks to your designated waiting areas because we still have designated spaces where you can load cars and designated areas where you are not allowed to load into your cars. So middle school car riders will dismiss at 245. They will dismiss to the rear entrance, the middle school entrance, for designated waiting areas and watch for their cars. If you're a high school car rider, this is different for this year, we are putting in a high school car rider line at the high school entrance. High school car riders will also dismiss at regular time, 245, and we will have designated waiting areas at the front high school entrance. High school car riders, you'll note that you will have to wait until the buses clear out, which is typically a little bit after 2.50 or so, like maybe 2.52-ish. But once those buses clear out, we will pull the high school car rider traffic down to the school where they can be loaded into cars at that time. So if you're a high school car, car rider, you will have some extra time to wait for those buses to clear before you can load your cars. Just a reminder that in both of those places, the middle school, and the high school, those waiting areas are covered areas so that you won't be standing out in the rain if it happens to be raining or in the baking sun if it's super hot as we begin school in August. If you're a bus rider, you will also dismiss at the normal time, 245, and continue through your normal process of exiting through the front entrances. One thing you may note if you're a bus rider is that this year your buses will be spaced out a little bit more than usual to allow for some spacing out as students line up to get in the buses. So if you're familiar with where your bus normally parks, you may have to look in those first few days to where that new space may be as we're spacing them out. If you have any other questions or if you're nervous about what to do or where to go when you arrive to school or how you leave school, just remember that our teachers know all of these processes and as you arrive school and you're exiting the building at the end of the day, 
we will have people throughout the hallways to help you with any questions that you may have. Next, we want to talk a little bit about our cell phone policy. Uh, we implemented a new cell phone policy last school year, and we had a lot of positive feedback from everyone, from uh, parents and teachers and students alike, that the policy really helped them focus on their learning a little bit more by not having some of those distractions coming through. So we're going to continue our policy uh, as we did last year with just some minor changes, as you can see here. Middle schoolers, uh, middle schoolers are not permitted to have cell phones out in the classroom during the day. The exception is during lunch. Uh, during lunchtime, they can have those devices out to check on any communications that may be coming through if they have to communicate with parents on a change in transportation for the afternoon or whatever it may be. But otherwise, those cell phones need to be put away. Typically, we would say that you, those are going to be stored in your lockers. Um, given our situation this year and how we might approach lockers and whether or not we even use them, we're going to ask that those cell phones stay in your backpack so they should not be out on your desk or in your pockets. They should be packed away in a backpack and turned off throughout the day. And that is for all middle school students. For high school students, if you are in grades 9 through 11, you can have your cell phones out during lunch, just like the middle school students, but you are also permitted to have them out in the hallways. And that's for grades 9 through 11, but you still cannot have them out during classes, just in your transition times and during lunch. For seniors, uh, they get a little more flexibility and, and a little bit more responsibility as they're preparing for college and they're working on things through uh, lots of different technology, things that they're working on for projects, senior projects, or whatever it may be. So they may need some more access to those devices. So 12th graders do have the option of having their cell phones out in class, but only if it's directed by the teacher for instructional purposes. So if the teacher says, we're going to do this activity, or we're going to take this quizlet or whatever it may be, and you can use your phones to do it, then you can get those out when the teacher asks you to do so, but otherwise they should be put up. Um, similarly, for the other grades, they can also have them out in the hallways as they transition between classes and at lunch. If you have any questions about the further details of the cell phone policy, you can uh, always check our Signal Mountain Middle High School Student Handbook, which is posted online on our school website. We will be updating the student handbook very shortly, so you may notice that it may be last year's, but again, with a case like this, very few changes will have been made. Next, I want to talk a little bit about dress code. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk about, the reason why we have a dress code and why it's important is we want to make sure that students understand that they're preparing for success, preparing for their future, and we want to create that atmosphere here at school. We know that, uh, you know, as you exit school and get into the workplace environment, you will have a dress code similarly. Uh, we have dress code for our teachers and employees here as well. So we want to start that process and, and really convey that environment of learning in a positive environment by the way that we dress and the way that we present ourselves. Uh, for the full dress code, again, you would want to consult the student handbook, but just as a general overview, some things to just to keep in mind is we want to make sure that our shirts and pants are at appropriate length, and we want to make sure that we keep our attire clean, that we don't have any suggestive language or images, that we don't have holes in our pants, those sorts of things. Um, things like hats and sunglasses and coats, we would ask you to keep those for outside, and when you enter the building, you would take those off. Um, you know, making sure that, again that we're presentable, you know, that we're not wearing pajama pants and those sorts of things. There are some finer details again to address, but as long as you're thinking about making yourself presentable and, and dressing for success and preparing for your future, you'll do a good job of coming to school and looking awesome. Uh, this year, however, we do also want to talk about face coverings. Uh, due to the changes that we've had in our school procedures with COVID-19, uh, as we enter a new school year, we are asking that all students and staff wear their masks throughout the day. Uh, this is part of the dress code, so it is a requirement that we have in the building. Uh, along with that, we are asking that you are socially distanced as much as possible as we can allow. At times, we are, uh, have opportunities for you to be able to remove your mask if you're outside in an outside classroom, for instance, and you're socially distanced outside, you may be able to remove that mask at that time. Uh, but again, we're treating this as part of the dress code. All staff and all students are being asked to wear those masks throughout the day. All right, so next we're going to talk about what to expect in middle school. And so I'm going to turn that over to our school counselors, Ms. Flowers and Ms. Doney, to talk about those things. 
Hi there, this is Miss Donan. I'm excited to be the sixth and seventh grade counselor this year at Signal Mountain. Middle school is a chance for new adventures and a clean slate. You're gonna be going to a brand new building. There's gonna be new teachers, new friends, and new experiences. And one of the first things that you will get to do to get started this year is to come to our Chromebook distribution day. We wanted to highlight this as, um, as an opportunity to come and get started with the technology piece. We have an, a video that Miss Roddy, our media specialist, created to talk more about how that Chromebook distribution day is going to look on Friday, August 7th. Hi, I'm Shannon Roddy. I am the media specialist and Chromebook coordinator for Signal Mountain Middle High. Wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about the Chromebook distribution that will take place on Friday, August the 7th from 9 to 11 a.m. It will be in the car rider line at the back of the school for the middle school students. Um, before you come, you'll want to make sure that you print out the one-to-one -one Chromebook contract that was sent to you in email and can also be found in slide nine of your orientation. Uh, when you print that out, please read through that with your student and make sure that they understand their responsibilities as a Chromebook owner. Um, also, you'll want to make sure that they sign their portion of the contract and then bring that contract with you on Friday, August the 7th when you come to pick up the device. Uh, we have designated times for pickup. So if your child has last name A through L, then they will have the pickup time of 9 to 10 in the morning on the 7th. And when they hand over their contract, we will provide them with their Chromebook and charger. Um, if your student's last name is M through Z, then your designated pickup time is 10 to 11 a.m. at the middle school pickup, uh, car pickup line. When you give us your contract and we give you that Chromebook and charger, we will also give you two sheets of paper. One will be insurance information. We uh, strongly encourage you to purchase that. It's a one-time fee of $25. It covers your device for the entire school year. It covers uh, defective chargers, uh, cracked screens, stolen or lost Chromebooks. So for $25, it's a great value because if anything does happen to your child's device and it's not insured, then that means it's a $400 cost to replace the device. And so $25, $400, it's, it's just a great bargain. So there you will have that information available to you. And then we will also give you a Chromebook troubleshooting sheet. Because as your child works from home with their Chromebook, they will start to see from time to time some different issues. Maybe the, the screen will freeze, or maybe the keyboard will freeze up, or they see that their device is no longer enrolled. And so this troubleshooting sheet is great because it gives you and your child the ability to um, work through issues that pop up from time to time and take care of it on the spot instead of having to wait until the next day and bringing it into me to take care of. And so this is really kind of your first line of defense in trying to solve issues that might pop up with the Chromebooks because usually it, it's nothing more than maybe doing a shutdown and um, kind of getting that Chromebook back in line. So uh, you will receive that troubleshooting sheet as well. Um, so look forward to seeing you on Friday, August the 7th. Uh, between that 9 and 10 or 10 and 11 time. If you have any questions about Chromebooks, once you pick them up, uh, you can reach me at Roddy underscore Shannon at hcde.org. Thank you. Well, Miss Roddy is going to be a great resource for you guys if you have any technology questions. And hopefully you'll be able to make it on that Friday, August 7th for the Chromebook distribution and to drop off the school supplies. And here we have listed the requested supplies for boys and girls for sixth grade. And so if you can just refer to this list. And also on that day, if you are able to 
come by and pick up your Chromebook, sixth graders are going to receive a special surprise as well. So we will just leave that as a surprise and you will, it will be a nice little welcome gift to Signal Mountain. All righty. This is Ms. Flowers and I am the school counselor for um, half of seventh grade and eighth grade. Um, in the school counseling office, we work as a team. And so if you're a sixth grader and you can't find Ms. Donan, uh, feel free to look for me and I will help you find Ms. Donan. We, we work as a team here and we help each other out. And so uh, we are happy to um, help students in any way that we can. Um, on this slide, um, we wanted to share our virtual tour. Uh, we were able to make this virtual tour video last spring, and if you haven't had an opportunity to view the virtual tour, I encourage you to click on the link and view the tour. It's a little bit long, and so we're not going to play the whole video for you right now. Uh, typically, at an orientation, you have the opportunity to meet your teachers, and since you won't be meeting your sixth grade teachers, until the first day of school, um, we wanted to take the opportunity to introduce them to you through this video. Uh, so please take a look at this video. SMMHS is an IB World School. Um, I wanna talk about what that means for middle schoolers. Um, with the IB program, it provides a framework of learning which encourages our students to become creative, critical, and reflective thinkers. What this means for middle schoolers is that uh, they are going to receive wonderful exposure to uh, different languages and arts throughout middle school. All of our middle school students will be a part of the middle years program. And when students become 11th graders, they get to decide whether or not they want to pursue the IB diploma program. At the bottom of this slide, you'll find the MYP quick reference sheet. So if you'd like to explore more about the MYP program at Signal Mountain, feel free to click that link. And if you have any IB or MYP questions, you can contact Melissa Bolden and her email is listed below. Since we are an IB school, our middle school students are exposed to many different languages. Um, right here we have a sample schedule. And what I wanna point out is if you look at the schedule and you look at the sixth period, you will see French, German, and Spanish listed. All of our sixth grade students get to participate in what we call the language carousel. And so all of our sixth grade students will be exposed to French, German, and Spanish throughout the year. The student schedule is going to look like this. Um, this schedule right here shows the full year schedule. Uh, this particular student is enrolled in chorus as well as art. And you can see chorus is one semester and art is the second semester. Um, the student schedules are going to be available for all students who have completed the registration process and those will be available on August 7th. They will be able to view their schedule in PowerSchool since we are doing all schedules online this year. Uh, one little tip we'd like to share uh, for the first day of school. Students should either print their schedules out or write them down inside their notebook. That way they can refer to their schedule throughout the day and the, they will know what classes to report to. We talked about the nuts and bolts of things with getting started on the first day, but just in general, what to expect in middle school. So, as you're coming from elementary to middle school, this is a huge transition. 
And now that you will have seven classes, you will have increased responsibilities and a heavier workload. That comes with, you know, seven classes means more papers to write, more tests, um, in addition to homework. And we really want you to be successful. So it's important to prepare for those higher expectations. You know, it's gonna be important for you to develop an organization and time management system that works for you. And it's also important to self-advocate. And you may have heard this term before, but to self-advocate means knowing what you need and knowing how to get what you need. And that's gonna be really important for you to speak up um, as you get older and as you go through middle and high school. And just a really important skill to develop. So one way that you might want to self-advocate is by emailing your teacher when you have questions about an assignment or if you are struggling in a class. Um, and that's something that students will do often. We, we have some tips here on how to compose an email and also you know, things to consider when you're sending emails to, to teachers or text to friends. You know, you wanna think about these, these things here. Are we being respectful? Who is your audience? Um, could someone misinterpret what I'm saying? That, that happens a lot with texting and social media. But when it comes to emails, you know, it's funny because we get emails a lot and students are so used to texting that, you know, some, composing an, an email is more difficult. So we found an, a quick little video on how to email a teacher. So let's show this. In general middle school success you know there's a lot of different things that that you can do to kind of make your experience a little bit more easier um, one thing is definitely using a planner or an agenda you may want to use a small planner that doesn't take up a lot of space in your backpack and you can also try an electronic version I personally always like to have things written down on paper it's important to find the system that works for you. And then setting goals is also really important because if you set a goal, if you write a goal down, you're more likely to achieve it. And I hope that you'll, you'll consider setting a goal for this year. Maybe it's getting all A's and B's for the first quarter or all year. Maybe it's finding one new club to join, or maybe it's finding someone new to talk to in a class. Um, so these are just things that you might want to try to consider 
as ways that you can improve your experience this year. Um, always turn in your homework. So if you, you don't want to have any zeros in power school, if, even if you have a 75% on a, on a homework assignment or a 60% on a homework assignment, that affects your grade and it in, improves your grade much more than it would if you had a zero. Getting to know your teachers is important because can refer you for certain clubs or opportunities that you might not know about. Um, they can also provide help when you need it. So that's important to ask for help. Reach out early to your teachers, counselors, and parents before it's too late or before you might be too far in a, in a hole with your grades. Uh, we are all here to help you be successful. Your power school and manage back tools are going to be your greatest tools, your essential tools that you will need uh, when we transi transition to any phase of online learning. Ooh, first day of school jitters. I know the first day of school is usually filled with lots of excitement and possibly some of those first day jitters as well. So we're going to touch on some of the questions you might have. Let me go ahead and start with the first question. Will I have a locker? So typically the answer is yes, but this year due to our COVID-19 safety procedures, we are actually not going to have lockers this first semester. Now I know this might make some of you disappointed since you were really excited to have those lockers and decorate them, but for this first semester, we are not gonna have lockers because we feel like that will be safer for our students at SMMHS. So the next question is, what do I carry in my backpack? Well, since you won't have a locker this semester, it's important that you don't put too much stuff in your backpack. It's important that you don't put things in your backpack that you might not need throughout the day. You will need your Chromebook and supplies from the supply list but your teachers will also inform you of the things that you will need to bring to school on a daily basis. Also, some of your teachers will allow you to keep your composition book in some of their classrooms, so that will help. You won't have to carry all of those composition books around with you throughout the day, but I don't want you to worry too much about that. Your teachers are wonderful, and they will inform you of what you need on a daily basis. So where do I go when I get dropped off? Remember from Mr. Carson's earlier slide, middle school bus riders will go to the middle school gym and high school bus riders will report to the high school gym. And then car riders and student drivers will remain in their cars until 730 and then go directly to their first class. And there will be plenty of faculty and teachers throughout the hall directing students where to go. So if you can't find your class, don't worry, someone will point you in the right direction. What if I've lost my schedule? Um, so earlier, we gave you a quick tip to write down your schedule in your notebook or have it printed out on that first day of school. But we all know that accidents happen. And so if you do lose your schedule, um, you can ask to ask any teacher that's lined up in the hall uh, where the school counseling office is and we will print you a new schedule. How will I find my classes? That's a really good question. On your schedule, there are room numbers listed. Um, but like I said, on that first day, all of our teachers are going to be out in the halls and they will direct you to your classes. So you find a teacher and ask and they will be more than happy to help you. For sixth graders, mostly all of your classes are on the sixth grade hall. There might be one or two that are in different locations around the school. Uh, PE, of course, you go to the middle school gym. Um, you might have a computer class on the uh, next level of the school across from the media center. Um, but for the most part, your classes are all on one hall. So that does make it easier. And how do I find my assignments? Well, your teachers, they will let you know 
on a daily basis what to do for the week. Um, but this question brings us to our next slide, and I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Carson at this time, and he's going to explain to you uh, what Manage Back and Power School are and how they can be extremely helpful to you this year. Thank you. Now this, this information is really important for anyone who's going to be new to Signal Mountain Middle High School, not just for sixth graders. Uh, because especially with Manage Back, that may be something that you've never seen before. If you're coming from another district, they may have had something like Power School, but Manage Back is unique to Signal Mountain and any other IB school. Um, the platform was built for IB schools to help accommodate our needs in the way that we teach and what we teach. And so the difference between the two and knowing when to look through each is that Manage Back will be where you go when you want to find all of your assignments, the work, right? Where is your day-to-day -day work? Where is that handout that I need? Or what is my assignment for today? That's in Manage Back. Power School is where the grades live. So how did I do on that assignment? How did I do on that test? That's where you log into Power School to check your grades. So you're really probably gonna be logging into Manage Back multiple times a day, or at least once a day to get that information. Whereas Power School, you may check uh, maybe once a day or maybe once every other day to check to see if any grades have been updated. So first, I want to talk to you a little bit about Manage Back. It is a school-wide learning platform that is not only for just simply posting a note about what your assignment is, but it's a multi-use platform where they can upload documents, where students can also upload work that can be uh, taken to be graded and the grades transferred to PowerSchool, instructional videos, links to Zoom meetings. There's a calendar that's in there for you to help keep everything organized so you can see when your teachers are posting things to be due, all of that kind of stuff. So typically what, we're, what you would see is that on Sundays you can go in and take a look and see your things that are posted for the following week. We're gonna ask that teachers are posting work at least for a week in advance. So if you're having to work from home, uh, if you're an HGS at home student, or if we're on a phase two schedule, if you may need to be working from home some days, you can take an early look before the week starts on what's coming up for that week. If you're new to Signal Mountain Middle High School and you don't know how to log in to Manage Back or even how to access it, some of that information will be coming to you as you get to school. There are links to Manage Back on our school website. The information that you need to log in will be provided to you once you get to school. Now, parents, you may be asking, do I get my own login for Manage Back separate from my students? And while that can be the case, what we find and typically what most parents will tell us is when it comes to Manage Back, they often will just use their student login to log in and check the information that they need if they need to. So once again, Manage Back is really about where you can go to find any work that's upcoming or work that you missed. Uh, any instructional videos or assignments, you can message your teachers in there. It's really a comprehensive platform for our learning. We also have an instructional video that's embedded in this presentation that you could watch at your leisure about how to get through Manage Back. It's really in depth and it's got uh, essentially a screenshot of a teacher walking you through what it looks like so they can show you what the calendar looks like, what to click on and where. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. So we would ask that you come back and take a look at this presentation after you've watched this recording and pull up the presentation that was provided with it. And you can click on this link here in the slide and watch the tutorial video about Manage Back. Welcome everyone, students and families to Signal Mountain Middle High School. Um, I am on our HCDE web website. And so today what I'm gonna be showing you is how to use so you can see that just shows you what it looks like as you get started with it. We have a similar setup with PowerSchool, but there is also an instructional video. You can see where it says, click here to access the PowerSchool parent student step-by-step -step login instructions. And I think there's also a video that will be in there with it. Now, PowerSchool, as I mentioned, is where the grades will live. And so students and uh, parents, you'll be logging in here to check the updates on any assignments or things like that. Um, and you notice that it says student and parent login. Parents, this is the one where you would probably prefer to have your own parent login. You can sync up um, multiple student accounts. So if you have kids in different grades, you can have it all in that same parent account to check. 
so it'd be better to access it that way. Most of you probably already have a PowerSchool login if you have been with us in Hamilton County Schools prior to this year. But if you are new to Hamilton County Schools and new to PowerSchool, we can provide that login information for you as well. Um, you can either email your corresponding assistant principal or you can email our registrar, Ms. Susan Patton, and she can provide that login information for you parents for PowerSchool. Students, if you don't know your PowerSchool login information, that will also be provided with you as you come to school. Again, this is where you're gonna check to see, do I have any missing assignments? Uh, is there anything that's marked as incomplete or zero? Or is there anything that I can make up? Sometimes you'll see that teachers will post some little notes on the grades. I've seen especially where the sixth grade teachers, um, it just says a helpful note, they can post a grade and there may be a note that says, uh, come by and see me if you need to retake this and, and get a higher score on it. So it's always be looking off the side for those little notes that may accompany the grade. And as you can see, here's another tutorial video for how to access PowerSchool. Welcome new students and parents to Signal Mountain Middle High School. This tutorial is going to be looking at how to navigate PowerSchool. And I know many people have been in it before, but we do have some unique things about our schedule that we would like to show you. And the next piece is our student resources. We have talked a lot about student resources, including um, our technology and the um, PowerSchool and ManageBack resources. One of, one of the really exciting things that we have here at Signal Mountain is a learning center, which is funded by our Mountain Education Foundation. And it provides tutoring for all subjects. The tutoring services are available during school um, and then also on Fridays during school hours, but we have after school tutoring as well Monday through Thursday. This may, these hours may change depending on what phase we are in, but you of course will, will have updates regarding that. In the Learning Center, there's multiple tutors available to help your student. And then as always, when you have any technology questions, Ms. Roddy is a great resource. She's in the Media Center where the, where the, learning, the learning Center is as well. So you can see her for technology assistance. And then when in doubt, you can always ask your counselor how your counselor can help. We do a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, students will often come to us for support when it comes to handling conflict with friends, relationships. Sometimes students need to come into our office to just decompress a little bit, um, develop some coping strategies when, they're, when you're feeling overloaded, overwhelmed. We can help you develop some organizational systems. We can talk you through some areas that you might be struggling with in your classes. And as you get older, we will also be working with you on career exploration and college planning. And you can email us easily to request a meeting or before school, if you want to just stop by the counseling center, you can let us know that you'd like to see, see one of us that day and we can write you a pass to come. And we just wanna make sure that we are as accessible as possible to you. Getting involved at SMMHS. Our school has so much to offer um, when it comes to clubs and sports. And I really truly believe we have something for every student here at our school. Research shows that students greatly benefit when they get involved in extracurricular activities at school. Um, they benefit in so many different ways. They have higher self-esteem. They feel better about themselves. Um, they benefit because they get to explore new interests, new hobbies. Um, for college and career, um, the more that they get involved, the more that they can list on their college applications and um, scholarship applications and resumes. Um, it helps boost academic performance. Students perform better academically when they're happier at school, when they're more invested in school. Um, and also most importantly, especially uh, during this time of COVID-19, uh, when students can feel a little bit isolated, 
Um, it helps them feel connected. It helps them feel connected to our school, their teachers, and to each other. It helps them feel connected to their friends. Um, and middle school is the perfect time to try new things. Um, it's the perfect time to dabble in something new. Uh, if you don't like it, you try something else the next year. Um, if you've never participated in a sport, try out, you never know. Um, it could be something that you really enjoy. And so I would encourage every student to find at least one club or sport to participate in throughout the year. Um, here is a list of our clubs that we offer at Signal Mountain. Um, as you can see, um, the, the club is listed on the left and the leader of the club is listed on the right. Um, for our club offerings for the 2020-2021 school year, um, those offerings and meeting times are still being finalized. Uh, so we will definitely update this list and update students as we finalize those clubs and meeting times. Um, our morning announcements are super crucial for students uh, to learn more about clubs and sports and upcoming events at our school. Um, so please uh, encourage your children to listen to the morning announcements that oftentimes that's how tryouts and clubs uh, will let the students know when when they meet. Um, middle school sports at Signal Mountain. As of now, middle school sports are scheduled to take place. Uh, for more information about our sports, you can uh, find an athletics page on our website. You can follow the link at the bottom of the slide. Um, the sports that are taking place in quarter one are listed there, tennis, cheerleading, cross country, football, and softball. Um, so this kind of lays out the different sports and the seasons that they will take place. Um, and again, if you have any questions, go to our website, you can find the coach and you can email the coach and ask questions or you can email your school counselors. Uh, we love to connect students with um, coaches and any teacher who runs a club and we love to help get students involved at our school. We have some great support so to Signal Mountain Middle High School. And one of the organizations who funds programs in our school, as including the Learning Center, which we mentioned, is our Mountain Education Foundation. And Hillary Robinson has shared a video with us on ways that you can be a part of the big picture for our students. Hi, I'm Hillary Robison with the Mountain Education Foundation. There are so many uncertainties about the school year, but one thing is sure, MEF is still hard at work meeting needs not covered by public funding, and you are an important piece of the big picture. We are all here because Signal Mountain Schools are a great place to be, and 100% of our students receive the benefits of the teachers and programs funded through donations to MEF. So we invite 100% of our families to participate in giving to MEF at whatever level you can. We need you to complete the big picture for our students. Every amount makes a difference for our 2,500 children. All contributions are tax deductible and put to work according to the needs determined by each school's principal and PTA, including funding 13 staff positions this year and other school resources that make up that big picture. Whether you invest $10 a month or $400 a month or any amount you choose, we need you. Will you complete that picture? Will you join us in our goal of 100% participation? We cannot do it without you. Please help us continue these much needed resources with your investment of a monthly recurring or annual gift at meftoday.org. That's meftoday.org for all the information and opportunities to invest. Thank you for making our schools an amazing place for all of our children. Thank you, Hillary. And you can see here some of the things that the programs and positions that MEF funds. And remember that 
you are an important piece of our school and we invite your participation and invite your involvement with, um, with MEF and any ways that you can help our school. Another way that you can get involved is through our Parent Teacher Student Association, which works closely with our faculty and administration and has various incentives throughout the year to, to help our school. And you can see the information here on this slide about how to contact um, and get involved with our PTSA. Some other important information and communication I'd like to uh, point out. Um, if your child has a diagnosis or has medication to keep at the school, you can contact our nurse, uh, Nurse Snyder, and her email address is provided. Uh, we also wanted to provide some information on uh, student lunch accounts and bus stop information. You can follow those links if you'd like um, to find out more information about student lunches and bus, bus stop information. Um, our weekly SMMHS newsletter, I wanted to talk for a minute about this newsletter. Our school puts out a weekly newsletter on Fridays. And now that PowerSchool has been rolled over for the 2020-2021 school year, all families who have completed the registration process should be receiving our weekly newsletter by Friday, August 7th. Now, if you're not receiving the newsletter um, within the next couple weeks, I would suggest that you reach out to your school counselor and we will make sure that you get on that list. Also, just some registration reminders. If you have not had the opportunity to complete the registration process, um, take a look at this slide and just make sure that you've completed all of the steps. All of our registration is going to be completed through PowerSchool and it's all going to be done online this year. Uh, make sure that you send your two proofs of residence to Ms. Adams. And also make sure you see the weekly newsletter um, for information on how to pay those school fees. And also lastly, only students who have been properly registered online and who have submitted two proofs of residency and have been approved will be registered for classes. Well, we have come to the end of our virtual orientation and just want to thank you so much for hanging in there with us. I know it is a lot of information, but we hope this has been helpful to you and answers some of the questions you might have about starting in a new school building. And we just want you to know we are so excited to greet your students the first week and we are here to support you and support your students as they embark on this new adventure at Signal Mountain Middle High School. If you have any great specific questions, please feel free to email us. Uh, the counselor's emails here are listed by grade level. So if you have any great specific questions, please reach out to one of us. And thank you again. Welcome to Signal Mountain Middle High School. <laughs>